I'm gonna go behind like we did last week using different methods. I'm gonna use one of the one of the different methods right now with the hand lock. When I go behind, what I would like to do is straddle him bias to one side. Okay, so I would straddle him basically here, like the uh, right hand force, like a cowboy straddle. I'm gonna do the same thing, but not go all the way. I'm gonna be like head over off the shoulder and keeping his hips between my knees. Okay, this way I can follow him wherever he decides to go. I can literally follow him. I'm on my feet too, so notice how much more how much more uh, mobile I am than if I go here, even on one knee, and he starts doing the same thing. Just do the exact same thing. See where his hips are going under my armpit. Now I have to make an extra effort to bring him back down, right? So I go behind him here, directly into this position. Pinch his hips with yours, okay, on one side. Now, what do I do with my hands? We mentioned already last time, the last thing I want to do is go here without any hooks, okay? Um, there is back takes from here that we can do, but it's totally unnecessary in this position. What I would do is put my hands behind his elbows, not one in front, one behind. Definitely not in front. My hands behind his elbows, and I'm not gonna lock for now. What I what I would like to do is just keep him loose right here. My forearms are like this. Okay, you can you can have them in any shape, uh, in any uh, kind of direction. I like them this way. My hands are kind of facing one another, and I'm in this position. Why? Because that keeps my elbows tight to his hip. If I open my hands this way, which you could do if you want, look at the slack between his hip and my elbow here, right? So I like to tighten my, my knees around his hips and my forearms around his hip bones here. Now, when Axel decides to go somewhere, my hands are free to grab, my hands are free to claw from here, my hands are free to move him around and operate in this direction, right? So for today, we're gonna go with a, um, just a regular spiral, okay, uh, spiral right to the one side. Okay, we could do it with a claw. I'm not gonna do a claw today. I'm just gonna block one of his arms on this side with one of mine, and the other forearm is gonna run into his hip as I move myself out of the way. This knee that was here is gonna stay as a blocker. My other leg is gonna step back slightly as I put my weight long here forward. My my other leg is gonna step back slightly. Now. I'm gonna pull Axel into this knee here, okay? And as soon as I feel he's going off balance and about to drop into my lap, I'm gonna move out of the way. So, we're here, come in, I start pulling this leg out. You notice that he's coming up into my knee. If I don't do anything, he's just gonna pull in my lap, so I'm gonna step out. What are you out. pulling with? Are you pulling with your elbow? You're I'm pulling, pulling with my elbow okay. here into the hip. That, that's a good thing about, like I said, palms, palms in, I guess so that my forearms and elbows are running across his, into his hips. Right. I'm pulling in with my elbow and my body weight into my right knee. Then I'm gonna step out of the way until he falls down here. This is ideal for me, where he's on an elbow and a hip, right? I might try to do things from here, get back up and stuff like this, we're gonna deal with that later. you keep the grip in that hand that you mentioned before? Oh, if I had it, in this case I just had it incidentally, but yeah, yeah. Uh, usually I might not have it. If I have this, it doesn't matter. ideal, it. this is a great position for me. Great, yeah. right? We're gonna have options from here. But let's say we don't have it, don't rely on it. So we're just falling to this position where we have him on an elbow and a hip, right? So, one more time, I went behind. I straddle bias to one side, my head is over one of his shoulders. Not over his shoulder here, but kind of looking into this shoulder while I'm diagonally controlling the other hip. My hands go behind his elbows into his hips with the palms in so I can control it with my forearms, right? Now I can go either way. We're gonna go this way for now. So I'm gonna go block this arm with my hand, with my arm here, with my forearm, or do it this way, it doesn't matter really. I'm gonna use this so I can get lucky and get his wrist if I can. But let's say I can go here, pull into this knee. This knee drops down towards the floor. All my weight comes back here to pull him into it. I step back slightly or as far as I can, really. I step back and I draw, 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 and make room for him to fall. He falls to an elbow and a hip, and I'm happy. We'll see what to do from here next, okay? But this is really gonna be the hardest part of breaking him down. Break him down to hip and elbow. Everything else from here is different variations and a continuation, but this is the hardest part. Go behind, I straddle, my head is across the shoulder, 
hands inside, palms open, and I go, draw, 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 boom. This is where I want it, right here, okay? Let's give it a try, guys, and we'll move from there.